All right, so this is the Acabalano AEX18 pasta machine. I am showing you how to use it, how to take care of it, what's possible with it. This is a pasta machine that really changes the game in kitchens. It changes what's possible, how we can cook, think, and create pasta. The machine itself has the hopper in front. Right in here is the drive shaft, which goes the brass auger. Be very careful with the auger. It's, it's solid metal, though you don't want to uh, chip it. We like to hand wash all the bronze pieces. Uh, even the stainless steel mixing uh, shaft is well worth uh, hand washing. So taking a look at it, we've got the, the top side here. Uh, the auger slides into the drive shaft. And inside here on the drive shaft, it clicks into place into the motor back here. We'll take a look at that uh, with the top side view in a, in a little bit. The next piece that goes in place is the mixer shaft. It slides into the comes through here, and then locks in place. What we then do is we have the uh, the cap which holds it in place. What you need to do is make sure this is always lubricated. Uh, you can use more of an industrial strength lubrication, but we like to use uh, pan release. It's just on hand, clean. We spray it in, we wipe it out, and we do that between uh, every usage. If you don't do this, you'll notice you'll get a squeaking going on. And if you like to hear squeaking in your kitchen, go for it. Don't lubricate it. You see that I, I, I push it on, it lines up through these brass screw bits. You then turn it into the notches, and they screw in place. We don't ever take these screws off, even though they do come completely off. We only unscrew them part way, just enough that we can turn the cap off, slide it on, in place, lock it down. That way you don't worry about losing these screws, because if you don't have these screws, you can't keep this cap. Here we have the, the dies for the machine. There's a wide range. I think there's, what, 50 to 100 different kinds. Mm -hmm. Uh, you see these two are very different in appearance and also thickness. It really depends on what kind of pasta you're going to make. Though this one, the patina it has on it, is, is based on, uh, we've been storing it in water. You say, well, why do you store it in water? We store it in water so the, the flour stays soft and malleable. And that way when we um, want to make a new batch of pasta, we just put the, the, the semi-dirty dye on, in place. We'll, we'll, I'll show you how that works. You've got the the cap or the ring cap, put the die in place, and screw it in. And you see that's that's hand tight. And the machine comes with this lovely wrench. And all you do is tweak it just like that. That's it. Just it's just giving it a little bit more tightness. So what happens now is this die has got maybe some, some old pasta in it, some wet old pasta in it, is when we start making pasta and start extruding. Uh, it'll push it out, you just cut it off and get, get rid of that, and then you've got fresh pasta coming out. Or if you want to spend hours and hours with uh, a toothpick, and I wouldn't recommend doing this because a toothpick can actually break in here, and then you're stuck with a, something that's going to misshape your, your noodles, and that's not a good thing. And we say, well, why not use stainless steel? Okay, stainless steel is harder than bronze, mm -hmm. so if you use stainless steel, uh, you're going to chip and make uh, indentations in your pasta dye, and you're going to be creating your own shapes, which... Look, they've made good shapes for a reason. Stick with them. So, let's take a look at this again. So, the can't really get it off. That's okay. We've got the wrench. Loosens it up. Comes right out. We've got the, the cap or the cover, the die. Then we have the lid's going to stay in place. And the auger that comes right out. And then we unscrew these, but not all the way. T twist it. Oh, there you go. And then out comes the, the mixing shaft. So this is what you have for the base parts of the machine. Okay, you can actually have six different dies of your choosing. Uh, then there's also the cutter attachment. We'll work 
a little bit more with that once we start making some pasta. But you'll see that. And then we also have these, uh, these two trays. And these tr two trays are not for drying pasta. This is not for making dried pasta. You could make dried pasta, but this is not your guy really to do it. Because uh, you don't have the drying facilities. You've got the pasta making facilities, but not the drying facilities. And really, if you can cook pasta in you know, five to seven minutes and not dry it, or you could dry it, go through the labor of drying it, and, and then have to cook it for 12 minutes, that seems like a waste. Also, you're going to be able to use ingredients that you may not want to dry. You want to keep refrigerated from uh, sea urchin to uh, lobster roe, uh, black truffles, or kimchi. You can now add those into your pasta doughs. And, and the drying process is going to you know, take away all those aromatics, those flavors, and, and not really have the, the shelf life that you're looking for. So these are for just making the pasta on. You'll see what happens is the pasta will extrude on it. We'll put our nests of pasta onto it, and it prevents them from steaming and becoming too moist underneath. And we'll get review that in a little bit. So let's put this machine back together. We like to put the auger in first. Clicks in place. Then we take the cover and the die. And the die that we're using today, we're going to make pasta alla gitana. Why? Because we can. Yeah. A little bit of, of, of locking it in place, but that's it. The mixing shaft. Lubricated, lock it in place. We'll put our cutter just over here for now. So now we'll talk about pasta. It's base pasta. What, what you're going to buy at a store but have much better here is, is semolina and water. We can talk about creativity and that's a whole other uh, presentation. Right now though we're going to take 2,000 grams of water and we have 620 grams of water in here. Why, why do we have those different amounts? It's actually a ratio. Making extruded pasta is very important and very, very ratio based. Extruded pasta benefits from anywhere between a 30 to a 33% uh, hydration. It's a baker's hydration or baker's ratio. So if you've got 2,000 grams of, of semolina and you want to have 30% water, that then gets you 600 grams. We have 620, which gives us just that little bit of extra in case we want to go up to 31 percent and if we need to we, we can get a little bit more water we have the technology. So what we're going to do is put the semolina right in here. Now this machine has two functions. It's got a kneading function and an extruding function. On the back here got a dial that lets you go between needs, and then there's a, a, a blank space which is off, and then extrudes. All right, so this is the back of the machine. You see we've got the needs, the zero which is off, and then two extrudes. If you have just dry flour in here, you always want to make sure you're on needs. If you have any question, you always just keep the machine on needs until you're ready to extrude. If you extrude with just dry pasta in here, you can pack it into the into the dye, because there is still moisture in the semolina, and really gum up the machine. So it's really a bad idea to, to tr uh, try and extrude before it's actually ready to do so. So again, keep it on needs until you're ready to. Then on the top of the machine here, you can see we've got a safety switch. And when we lift the, when we lift the cover, it trips in place. And what that do, the safety switch does, is it prevents you from opening the machine and putting your hand in and kneading at the same time because that's really not a smart idea. Then over here we have our third on off switch. So we've got the safety switch tripped, we've, we're on needs, and then we hit start. And you can see we're kneading away beautifully. Though we have no water in there so all we're doing is spinning flour. So at this point, we are going to start pouring in our liquid. And 
And we're doing it slowly to, again, evenly disperse it amongst the, uh, the semolina. And you can see, start to see we, we're getting some granulars, some pellets going. And we've added, oh, give or take, probably 500 grams of, of water to it right now. Well, we've added about 430 grams, 450 grams. So if I was to turn the machine off right here, if I lift this top up, you see how it turns off? And then I grab the, what's going to be dough, it's not anything yet. It's starting to crumble, but if I try and squeeze it, it's not coming together. So we certainly know we need a more liquid. And based on our ratio, we have a 130 grams more liquid to put in place. So let's turn it back on. So now you can see you've got a much, much nicer pebble size. It's really looking like it's starting to come together. So we'll let this keep going for another minute or so, then we'll, we'll take a look at it. Just by feel of this flour that we're working with, the semolina we're working with today, it seems a little drier than uh, other stuff we worked with recently. So it might take a, a touch more water. We might end up at 31 or 32% hydration. But you don't want to rush the hydration of the dough either because you know when you pour water on top of the uh, semolina it'll uh, take a little while for it to absorb so patience is, is not a bad thing in this pasta making so we'll turn it off and occasionally you'll see that you get some some dough caught up in here and you just you fold that back in place that's not going to be anything really to worry about as you can see you got a little bit here but if I squeeze that now it's still crumbly. But we've not really given it a ton of time to hydrate. We're going to take these last little bit of water that we have, which is that extra 20 grams we talked about. So we're going to be at about 31%. And we'll pour that in. We'll let that knead for a minute or two. So, need it for another 30 seconds, then we're going to let it rest here, and we'll take a look at it in just a minute or so. As you can see, the dye is, is starting to warm up. We still have a lot of big ridges on there, and so we want them to, to slowly go away. This one here is, is getting closer. You can see the chitara now is, is really starting to get, get its traditional square shape. It's like leather shoelaces. It's like leather shoelaces. And as you feel this now, now it's starting to warm up. And what's happening is all that friction, all the power from extruding is uh, bringing this dough together very, very nicely. Of course, the other fun thing besides getting warm pasta out of it is the smell, the aroma. It's such a beautiful dough. And this now is ready to start going. So we're going to just take, we use the, the length of the pasta. And we just start tucking nests. So if we were to keep going, and we will do a few more of these, we should get about 50 or so of these nests uh, from one batch. One batch, again, was 2,000 grams of semolina, 600 grams of water. This hopper can take, oh, up to about 3,000 grams of product. Uh, beyond that, and the lid starts popping up. We do have this little uh, safety catch just so the lid doesn't pop up mid-mix. 
I've had that happen on occasion. So you can start to see the difference in the in the pasta. Even even as we started to extrude, we're getting just a little bit nicer as, as the the pasta making continues. Okay, so we're finishing up our first tray. Let's turn this off. Cut it. So this is probably enough pasta alla chitara that we'll need. So we'll take this tray, and right now we're going to feel this pasta. It's pretty dry today. So in, in a couple minutes, what we'll do is we'll take this pasta, and we will put this pasta into either Ziploc bags or fish tubs or a container that's covered. Uh, you don't want to put the pasta while it's still warm into that environment because it'll start to steam. So you want it just cool uh, so it doesn't dry out. If you have any questions about it, what you can do in the interim is you just take a nice, a nice towel, not wet, just dry, lay it right on top, and sit it there while you're working with your other pasta. So we've got this little bit of chitar on the end. We'll scrape that out of the way. And we might as well make a different kind of pasta. So what we'll do, again remember to turn this back onto needs and open up the hopper, take a look inside here. You can see we've used you know, maybe a third of our, our pasta dough from earlier. Still very dry and pebbly, which is great. We don't want to turn into a, a gummy machine or a gummy mess in here. Uh, you think about traditional pasta making and you, you want a, a big ball. In extruded pasta making, a ball is bad. So we're going to release this. Take a look. You can see we've got some dough inside the ring here, and some dough on the, uh, the threads on the outside here. We'll clean those up before we put this machine back together to make a different pasta. And this is the oh, chitara. Well, it's not that difficult, but there we go. So you can see you've got this, this dough, this dough mass on the end. You don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to pull the auger out of its setting inside the machine. You just want to pull some of the pasta. If you've got any cruddy pasta, don't put that back in the machine. There's no point to it. It's only a you know, couple cents worth. So then this here, we'll just put this into our, 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 our bath. Then what we'll do is we'll, we'll pick out a different, a different dough. And let's see what we have here. This is a fun one. This is very similar to a jiggly, not quite. We'll just, we'll just pat or dry this off. Okay. Wipe it. Again, just inside here, we just give it a little, a little cleaning. Again, once we start extruding pasta, it'll push it right out. Now, in this case, on the outside here, we want to uh, take a look at our, 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 our die here, or the, the ridges, and we want to get any dough out of here. This is a little bit of a stainless steel. This is like a, well, very much similar to a paper clip. And what we do is we just use that in here. And it's hard to use a little stainless steel inside these ridges because they're, they're not nearly as, as delicate and tender as, as the fine etchings for the the dyes themselves. Okay. And the reason we're getting this all out now is so that uh, we can get the get it on completely when we put it in place. If we need to, just the tip of a paring knife works well. And again, just be, do, do it gently. And the more you pay attention to the small details in, in putting the machine together and apart, the longer this machine will last. Uh, and last is a very important thing. All right, and then this sets in place. And just getting the screw in places. And there we go. Right in place there. Sorry. We'll lock it down. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to warm this die up first, and then we're going to put the cutting attachment onto it, so that way we can take a look at that as well. Turning it on, turning it on to extrudes. We will just get a little bit of a, a towel to put underneath. Find it a little bit easier. Extrude it out. You see we're getting that junk, that weirdness. Once it gets clean, there we go. If you like a like, nice long shape, you don't have to put a cutter on. But right now is a good time, before we get too warmed up, to put the cutter on. We've got the lock adjustment here, and then there'll be another lock adjustment on here. This is uh, the first round with the, the two adjustments on it, so this one eventually will be movable. What we do is we make sure that we've got the spring-loaded uh, cutting device, and what we do is we, we slide it on in place. Okay, and we push it in, so we don't push it all the way in, you just want to have a little bit of spring, and we twist this in place. And then, in your devices, you'll be able to twist this in place as well. And you see now on here, the cutter, it's got some spring to it. We then bring this around, we plug it in here, it's like an old ampl amplifier plug-in. When you pull it in and out, you want to pull it by the handle, as opposed to by the electric piece because otherwise well it'll come right off then this is controlled by the power here so what we do is we turn this on and we hit on here and you can see the cutter is already cutting so we can slow this slow the speed down speed it up slow it down and by adjusting the speed we adjust the size of the pasta being cut and if you didn't want to have it on at all, there's the on-off switch on this back side here, behind the, uh, where the cutter speed is controlled. So you're seeing the, the nice pasta shape coming out. So you could just turn the, the cutter off, it stops going, and you can turn it back on if you wanted to, if you wanted to have, well, just pause it mid, midstream like this. Alright, so we've, we've, we've pulled everything back out again. So we've got the, the auger, which again you can see set right nicely in here. And that's come out. We've taken out the uh, mixing shaft. Again, this is the back side where it actually sits in place. And we'll show you how to put it together once we are uh, cleaned up here. Again, we've got the, the collar, which has little bits of flour in it. We want to use either our, our little tool or the tip of a paring knife very gently and carefully to clean it out. So I'm going to soak these in, in some water in the sink, just to make the, the semolina or flour easier to semolina flour easier to come off. We will just 
wipe up some of these, these crumbs that we have currently. And then we'll continue just to clean the inside of the machine. And to clean the inside of the machine, we use this pastry scraper, and it really just cleans things up. Occasionally, you'll see that you've got really firm bits, and what we use is, this is a, a bronze brush, and it doesn't scratch. All right, so here we have the clean parts. I also wanted to just leave these, this pile of rubble. This is what we actually cleaned out from inside the machine. So you want to see uh, really what a good cleaning is, is going to do for it. So now to put everything back together, if you want to just take a, a top side look here, we're going to slide the auger right back in place. And you see how it lines up here, straight up and down, slides in place. And while it doesn't come flush right in this spot, it, the uh, extended piece goes all the way to the back, and that's what you're looking to make sure that happens. Okay. Sometimes if there's flour in, the, in there at all, it'll be packed out like this, and you'll know it it's, needs to be clean. But when it sits flush like that, we're all perfect. Then we take the, uh, the mixing shaft. We slide it in. It goes into the front hole square piece comes in place. We take the cap, slide it in, turn it, screw these guys in place, and put the lid down, put the spring cap on top, and then we just use a, a clean die that doesn't have any flour or anything stuck in it. that in place and that way the reason why I keep putting a die in place is so that the auger doesn't fall out. Let me just lock it in place. So that's our uh, our tour of, of the Arco Boleno, the AEX 18.